Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Jamaican brown stew chicken. That's right, I've been wanting to make this for a while since I absolutely love any kind of braised or stewed chicken recipes, especially ones that have sort of the same similar flavorings as a jerk chicken. And while I might make a few small adjustments next time, this really did come out amazingly well. And by the way, this video is not going to contain any Jamaican me hungry puns. Okay, that would be too predictable. Although having said that, fair warning, watching this could definitely be making you hungry, or at least I hope so. And what we'll do to get started is go ahead and mix up our marinade, which is going to start with a minced habanero pepper, or scotch bonnet as it's actually referred to in the Caribbean. And yes, those are very, very hot. And then to that we will add a whole bunch of freshly picked and chopped thyme leaves, as well as some minced garlic and ginger, along with some freshly sliced green onions, All right, mostly the light parts, and then we'll save the green parts to mix in at the end of the recipe. We are also going to want some brown sugar, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, and of course a generous amount of salt. And then we will bring this home with some smoked paprika, plus a little touch of allspice. And then last but not least, a very small splash of apple cider vinegar, at which point we'll take a whisk and give this a mix. And I call this a marinade, but it's really more of a rub, although it's too dry to be a wet rub, and too wet to be a dry rub. So I think what we're actually making here is a damp rub. Although that might not be the best phraseology. But no matter what you call this, once it's mixed up, we'll simply set that aside. And then we can move on to prep our chicken. And for this, I'm going to be using some skin-on, bone-in chicken thighs. And some relatively gigantic ones at that. And as we often do when we're working with chicken thighs, I like to take a sharp knife and cut into the skin side. All right, that's the meat side. We're going to go into the skin side. And we'll make sure we're cutting perpendicular to the bone. And we'll make two slices about an inch or so apart, slicing all the way down until our knife hits the bone. And not only will that allow this to cook a little bit faster, but it's going to help our damp rub penetrate even deeper. So I went ahead and did all eight. And it's probably worth mentioning that traditionally this is done with a whole chicken, which works great because you got all those bones and connective tissue. But I think by using the thighs, we get all that anyway. And then once our chicken's prepped, we can go ahead and toss it one by one in our rub, making sure both sides on each thigh are well coated. And then once that's been accomplished, what we'll do is wrap this up and let it marinate in the fridge overnight. All right, that is my official recommendation. Although from what I hear, you could get away with like four hours if you had to. But personally, I really do think longer is better. So I went ahead and wrapped mine up and popped it in the fridge for about 12 hours. At which point we can pull it out, unwrap it, and start to brown it up. But before we do that, as we pull this out of the rub, I like to take an extra minute and sort of scrape off any of the chunks. Okay, we don't have to get it all. But ideally, I'd just like to brown the chicken here and then add the rest of our marination ingredients in later. But either way, we'll go ahead and brown up these pieces in a little bit of olive oil in a deep, heavy skillet set over medium-high heat. Oh, and by the way, once these are brown, we can put them right back into the same bowl. So you don't need to do anything with that. Just set it aside until your chicken's nicely browned. Which, because of that brown sugar we added, is going to happen relatively easily. So we will brown that thoroughly on both sides and then remove it to the aforementioned bowl. And as we do that, we're gonna notice a lot of fat remaining in the pan, which is a good thing, because into that very flavorful chicken fat infused olive oil, we will toss one diced yellow onion, along with a generous pinch of salt, and we'll cook that stirring for a few minutes, or until it starts to turn golden brown. And most of that color is gonna come from the moisture released by the onions deglazing some of those brown bits off the bottom. So we're not gonna cook the onions very long at this point, since those are going to be cooking for a while with the chicken. So it's only going to take a few minutes for them to look a little something like this. At which point we're going to sprinkle over one more spoon of brown sugar. And then cook that stirring for a couple minutes more. Or until our onions turn a deeper shade of brown. And that sugar caramelizes onto the bottom of the pan. And becomes a very dark brown. Okay, not black. We don't want to burn it. But we definitely want it dark brown. And I didn't do you any favor by using a black cast iron pan. Since it is not very easy to see on the bottom. But hopefully you can see that dark brown caramel-like substance sticking onto my spatula. And by the way, make sure your chicken stock is right next to you. Because as soon as that happens, before it burns, we want to quickly but carefully pour in our chicken broth. Which is going to deglaze the bottom and stop any further browning. Oh, and speaking of browning, what we're actually supposed to do here is add a teaspoon or two of something called browning sauce. Which I guess is similar to like a kitchen bouquet type substance. Used to slightly sweeten but mostly color a sauce or a stew or a stock. But I didn't have that. So to basically accomplish the same thing, we'll just go ahead and caramelize a little brown sugar, which will hopefully have just about the same effect. And then besides the broth, we will also add some tomato ketchup. 
And some of the recipes I've seen also call for some diced fresh tomato, which if you have it would be totally fine here. Otherwise, I think the ketchup is more than sufficient. Oh, and we'll also want to toss in a couple bay leaves. And then what we'll do is wait for this all to come up to a simmer. At which point, if we're using them, we can go ahead and toss in some veggies, which for me will be some sliced carrots, as well as some orange and yellow bell pepper. And then once we have those stirred in, we can go ahead and nestle our chicken back in the pan, along with, of course, any and all accumulated juices, as well as those extremely flavorful bits that were in the bowl from our marinade. And that's it, the rest of this recipe is as easy as it is relaxing, since all we're going to do is lower our heat to medium low, and simmer this gently for about an hour to an hour and a half, or until our chicken is nice and tender, and our sauce is reduced and thickened up a little. And other than giving it the occasional baste, or if you want, you could turn the pieces over once in a while. Oh, and the other thing we should do as it simmers, is go ahead and skim any excess fat that comes to the top. And fair warning, there will be a lot of it. But other than that, all we're going to do is basically wait and watch. And what we're watching is what I like to call the race. All right, the race between the chicken getting tender and the sauce reducing. And if the chicken wins the race and becomes tender before your sauce is reduced as much as you want, no problem, we'll just remove the chicken and keep cooking the sauce until it's exactly how we want. But on the other hand, if the sauce wins the race and it reduces down but the chicken still needs a little more cooking, then all we need to do is add a little splash of water and continue cooking until everything's perfect. And either way, that is just you cooking. So you watch, you'll observe, and you will adjust. But every once in a while we get really lucky, and our chicken gets tender at the same time our sauce reduces exactly how much we wanted. Which is exactly what happened to me this time. And I know, nobody likes a tie, but here that is like the best outcome. And then besides of course testing to make sure our chicken is nice and tender, we will also taste and adjust our sauce, just in case it needs a little more salt, or maybe a little more heat, which is when you could sneak in a little bit of cayenne if you wanted, but I'm happy to report mine tasted exactly how I wanted. So I went ahead and finished this up with some sliced green onions. And I turned off the heat and stirred those in. And that's it, my Jamaican brown stew chicken is ready to serve up. Which I decided to do on some steamed rice and green peas. And of course we'll also want to spoon around some of our veggies. As well as spooning over a generous amount of that amazing sauce. And I finished up with a sprig of almost flowering thyme. And that's it, my Jamaican brown stew chicken was ready to enjoy. And that, my friends, really was incredible. Okay, as you might suspect from the ingredients we used, this is sweet and spicy and salty and very, very savory. And if you happen to like the flavors of jerk chicken, you are going to love this. Okay, it does have a similar flavor profile, although it is definitely sweeter. And if I were to tweak anything for the next time, I'll probably reduce the brown sugar amount a little bit. And mostly that's because the onions and the carrots and the peppers also added some sweetness. And of course, like all stews, this would be a great catch-all for whatever seasonal vegetables you happen to have hanging around. Alright, it might not be traditional, but I could totally see some summer squash being really nice in this. Or even something like eggplant. Or maybe some small baby potatoes. But anyway, as usual, all those additions will be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Peter Tosh, of what to nosh. And the point is, I can't imagine too many things not being amazing in this incredible stew. But anyway, that's it. My take on Jamaican brown stew chicken. A sincere thanks to the people of Jamaica for letting me appropriate another one of their recipes. Okay, you guys can go ahead and adapt any one of mine. That's only fair. And even though I didn't use the exotic and mysterious browning sauce, I still hope I did this recipe justice. All right, I realize it's probably not that authentic, but it sure was delicious, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.